Hey folks, this is Ben Lang with Road to VR here at CES 2014. We're at the YEI booth checking out Creo VR, the virtual reality motion tracking system that these guys have been working really hard on and uh, we'd like to check out the latest. So I have with me here Paul Yost who is head of development at YEI and he's going to let us know what's going on. So last time we checked out the system, uh, you had a very early prototype of the suit and we also saw the three space. What has happened since then? Uh, since then, we now have kind of what I would term a advanced prototype rather than an early prototype, at least as far as the hardware itself goes. So the all the all the sensors that you see in the suits here are completely redesigned, uh, working very well. Uh, the wireless hub that you'll see uh, being worn uh, also working very well. Advanced prototype stage of that as well. The thing that we still have left to work out are mostly kind of mechanical and um, ergonomics issues with putting the suit on, having it be comfortable, having it wearable, and then having the connectors be re very robust and reliable. And so that's what we're working on going forward is a little bit more tweaks with the algorithms and the sensors, but mostly that technology is stable. Now it's just making it so that it's mass producible and comfortable to wear and easy for people to use. And since the last time we saw it, you've added the nunchucks. How are those uh, integrated, and where do you see them going as you continue to develop the system? Um, essentially, the we based on the comments we received from our Kickstarter, we decided that hand controllers are really essential. Uh, the nunchuck was something that already existed, it already had triggers, it already felt like a gun, it also had analog sticks. So that was a obvious thing for us to get integrated quickly without having to do all of the engineering of that ourselves. Um, so where that will probably go is we'll probably continue to ha have the nunchuck hand controller support, but we might also have our own controller that adds, adds additional options for uh, action buttons as well. Um, but the idea is that gaming, if you're going to shoot things like in a first-person shooter, you still want to have that tactile feedback of something in your hand, or you still might want to run through the environment using the analog stick and sit on your couch and be lazy, but when you get somewhere, you might want to jump up and fight something, uh, punch, still move your hands around. Have, so you still want that full body motion tracking, but you still need that analog stick and possibly input buttons to do things like trigger functions, switch weapons, things like that. So it's kind of that hybrid approach that we're uh, aiming for with our system now. And you said that you've improved the range over previous iterations, is that correct? Yes, we've actually both improved the range and the battery life. We were shooting for 10 hours, we're getting about eight and a half uh, hours right now with a full suit. Um, but we haven't optimized yet that yet, so we're still planning on getting the 10 hours of battery life for a complete charge. And then the wireless range, uh, we're actually getting, uh, really we can probably get somewhere uh, close to 1,000 feet, although you really probably wouldn't ever need that anywhere. And it's interesting that here at CES, where there's just tons and tons of wireless traffic, uh, we're still performing very well. And we had Chris earlier walk all the way down the aisle here, and you could see on the screen it was still tracking him uh, perfectly. So uh, we're very happy with the performance improvements uh, with respect to the wireless range and the battery life both. So. Ergonomics are obviously very important for the system. Uh, if, you, if it takes too long for people to put it on, they're not going to want to use it. You've made some changes since uh, the last time we saw it. Uh, better looking, I think, and now the hub is directly mounted on there. But you say now that you're uh, working with some design firms to, to really get something that consumers are going to want? We're, we're working with designers to improve the ergonomics. We're also, uh, we know we have to make changes to the connectors so that rather than having to fiddle with getting the connector in properly, you just uh, put the suit on, put the arms on, and just plug in very quickly. Also, the hub itself, actually, uh, we designed it so that it very easily removes from the harness. Uh, and we've talked about actually making it so that at, when you slide the hub in, it makes contact with all the stuff in the suit without having to necessarily plug things in. So that everything could be built in. We're planning on having the wires be integrated with the harness itself. So you put the harness on, slide the hub in, uh, and you're ready. Plug the arms in, and you're ready to go. A lot of people are interested in a glove type of tracking system. You know that. Um, and I know that you have said previously that that's something that, that you're very interested in doing. But, our, but for the dev kit for this, is it definitely going to be a nunchuck and you're going to work on the glove later down the road, or are you still not sure? Um, we are still not 100% sure. Uh, the, right now, we're looking at some sort of hand controller uh, as probably the most likely option with a glove to shortly following in development. Um, but if we can solve all the problems we have now, more quickly than we anticipate, then the glove being the next thing on the list is going to be an obvious thing. But for the initial dev kits, it's probably going to be some sort of hand controllers uh, along with the system. Okay. And so you are moving on to relaunching your uh, Kickstarter 
Can you uh, remind us about that? Yes, the Kickstarter, uh, the new Kickstarter, the relaunch of that is going to be February 14th, Valentine's Day. Uh, so if you have somebody special that's interested in VR, you can buy them a, a Kickstarter uh, reward for Valentine's Day. Um, and it's going to be a 45-day campaign. Essentially, since we've got most of the technological issues, uh, I wouldn't say solved, but in a very advanced state, most of the money is going to go towards uh, mass production and finishing off the design that we need to actually produce these. Uh, we're planning on having a very, very short turn time on the um, actual units being produced from there. We're still planning on a somewhere uh, June um, of this year having the first units ship with mass uh, produced numbers to follow shortly thereafter. And are you looking at the same pricing structure or thereabout that you had in the previous Kickstarter? Um, we have essentially the uh, same pricing structure. We have three suit options that consist of the uh, um, light version, which is an upper body only, perfect for if you want to be lazy and sit on your couch but still have this wide range of accurate motion control. Um, uh, that one is going to be under $300, probably in the high 200s. Uh, we have a... Uh, one in the middle that is a full body suit that we're calling the core suit. Uh, and then we have the pro version, which is mostly geared towards uh, animation. Uh, but all of the suits are going to be under $400. They're all going to be priced. So even the pro one uh, is going to be under $400. OK, great. And is there anything here personally that you're interested in seeing at CES? Um, pretty much everything. I hope to get out of the booth and walk around. This is an exciting uh, place. There's a lot of wearable technology, a lot of things in motion tech. Uh, and a lot of things in gaming, so I'm looking forward to getting out and walking around and just seeing things are out there, and a lot of those things will give us ideas on how to make our stuff better as well. So, Great. Well, thanks for chatting with us, and good Thank luck at the show. Thanks, Ben.